When an escaped rhinoceros is trying to eat us up, don't be ridiculous! But I'm so tired! Hurry, Mrs. Trotter! It's raining on us! Declare as lovely as a 
nose, just feast your eyes upon my face. Absorb my shapely nose, behold my heavenly silky locks, and if I take off both my socks, you'll see my dainty toes. <laughs> but don't forget, my dear old sponge, how much your tummy shows. Oh. Why, sponge, you're red, go soak your head, my sweet, you cannot win. Behold my gorgeous curvy shape, my teeth, my charming grin. Oh, beauteous me, how I adore my radiant looks, and please ignore the pimple on my chin. <laughs> My dear old truck to the world of self, your only bones and skin, such loveliness I, I possess, can only truly shine. Oh, in Hollywood, oh, wouldn't that be fine? I'd capture all the nation's hopes, and then give you all the leading parts, the stars would all resign. I think you make, without mistake, a lovely Frankenstein. <laughs> Gee, it's like a, I feel as if I'm going to, going to, going to faint. Stop that nonsense and get in with your work, you disgusting little beast. <laughs> oh, it's Budget and Spiker. Couldn't we all please just for once go down to the seaside on the bus? It isn't far and I feel so hot and awful and lonely. Why, you lazy good-for-nothing brutes? Get on with your work and give us some peace, you disgusting little worm. <laughs> little bag than in all the world combined. But, but, what are they? Where do they come from? Ha! You'd never guess. Crocodile tongues. One thousand long, slimy crocodile tongues. Boiled up in the skull of a dead witch for twenty days and nights. Add the eyeballs of a lizard, the gizzard of a pig, the fingers of a young monkey, <laughs> the beak of a green parrot, and the juice of a porcupine. Don't forget three spoonfuls of sugar. Stew for another week and let the moon do the rest. Here, you take it, it's yours. Now, all you must do is this. Take a large jug of water and add in all the little green things all at once. Then, very slowly, pluck 10 hairs from your own head and add them in one by one. That sets them off. In a few minutes, it will begin to froth and bubble furiously, and as soon as that happens, you must drink it all down in one big gulp. Soon, uh, <laughs> soon, your stomach will begin to churn and boil, and steam will start coming from your mouth. But after that, immediately after that, marvelous things will happen to you. <laughs> Fabulous, unbelievable things, and you will never again be miserable in your life, because you are miserable, aren't you? I know all about it. Well, take that and do exactly as I say. Don't let them escape, for if they do, they will begin working their magic on whatever it is they see. Be it bug, insect, animal, or tree, that will be the thing that receives the full power of their magic. Hold it tight. Don't let them escape. Off you go. Hurry now. <laughs> Gone. They're all gone. But where have they gone to? 
There's nothing down there except the wheels of the old peach tree. Now hold up, Arthur's and centipedes and their many and their friends. Get up at once, you lazy little beast. Get back over there immediately and finish chopping up those logs. Why don't we just lower the boy down the well and leave him there for the night? That dog will teach him a lesson not to lazy around well like this the whole day long. That's a very good idea, my dear sponge. But let's make him finish chopping up the wood first. Be off with that one, you hideous brat, and get to work. Sponge, Sponge, come here at once and look at this. At what? A peach right up there on the highest branch. Can't you see it? You're teasing me, Spiker. That tree has never had blossom. Let alone a peach. There's one in it now, Sponge. You look for yourself. Ha <laughs> ha. Good gracious me, there really is a peach up there. Hey, you, come over here. I want you to pick that peach right up there on the high fence. Can't you see it? Yes, I see, Sponge. I can see it. And don't you dare to eat any of it yourself. Your Aunt Spiker and I are going to have it together. Half each. Get on with you. Up you go. Stop. Hold everything. Look. Look, Sponge. Look. What's the matter with you? It's growing. It's getting bigger and bigger. What? What is? The peach, of course. My dear Spiker, that's ridiculously, it's one of those that's, no, that can be right. Great, it's going, that thing really is growing. Great, Caesar's ghost, I can actually see the thing bulging and swelling before my very eyes. Will it ever stop growing? Get away from the tree trunk, you silly boy, the slightest shake you'll fall off and break. Stand back, I can already see the winds starting to break. I can't believe it, but the wind isn't breaking. Hallelujah, what a peach. <laughs> Stand with the cold, when magnifico, terrific, and what a meal. It's right, it's perfectly juicy. <laughs> my dear, now it's see, my dear Spike, why don't we just get some of and dig out a big hunk for you and to eat? But I can't wait to eat some. My dear Spiker, there's a pile of money that can be made. If only we can handle it right. You just wait and see. <laughs> roll up, roll up. Only ten pence to see the giant peach. Half the price for children under two weeks old. One at a time, please. Don't push, don't push. You're all going to get in. Hey, you, come back and you have a pay. It'll cost you the double to bring in a camera. Aren't you glad you put bars on Jimmy's window? <coughs> that disgusting little brute would only get in the way to him wander about. Can you believe he complained just because that he was lonely? Lonely and haven't met any other children for years and years? <laughs> what nerve! Here we are, just about to become millionaires, and the only thing that he can think of is himself. Gee, everyone has gone home. Maybe we should close up for tonight, Spiker. Maybe you're right, Sponge. We'll get the brass to clear up the mess out here. He probably wants something to eat, since he hasn't had anything all day. Well, he better not ask. We're too busy to make food. We have to count our money. I better call him to make sure the worm isn't asleep. Worm, Brad, wake up, Twerp. The audience clean it right away. <laughs> Tonight, I don't even hear a sound. It's strangely quiet. Boy, am I hungry. I suppose I should be more concerned with my ants, though. And Spiker says all I do is think about myself. Maybe she's right. Gee, it's kind of spooky out here. <laughs> Mouse. 
<laughs> What's that? I, I, I don't believe it, but there's a hole in the side. It's quite a large hole, the sort of thing an animal, an animal about the size of a fox might make. This isn't just a hole, it's a tunnel. Boy, it really is damp and murky in here. These walls are wet and sticky and it tastes like peach juice dripping from the ceiling. Mmm, delicious. Now it's going uphill towards the very center. Ow! What's this? It seems like a solid wall. It feels like one except that it's very dark and full. Deep glue. Good grief. I know what this is. I kicked the stone in the middle of the peach. And here's what appears. And here's what appears to be a small door cut into base with a stone. Let's see now. Uh, there. It's from open. What's this light? Look who's here. We've been waiting for you. Oh, no, no. I'm hungry. I'm famished. So am I. Everyone's famished. We need food. Aren't you hungry? <laughs> what is the matter with you? You look positively ill. He looks as though he's going to faint any second. Oh, my goodness. The poor thing. He do believe he thinks it's him we are wanting to eat. Oh, oh dear. dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. What an awful thought. Don't be frightened. We wouldn't dream of hurting you. You're one of us now. Didn't you know that we're all in the same boat, er, Peach? We thought you'd never turn up. I'm glad you made it. So cheer up, my boy. Cheer up. And meanwhile, I wish you'd come over here and give me a hand with these boots. It takes me hours to get them all off, all off by myself. <laughs> well, uh, you have a lot of boots. I have a lot of legs and a lot of feet. One hundred to be exact. I am, I am a centipede, you know. There he goes again. He simply cannot stop telling lies about his legs. He's only got 42. The problem is that most people don't bother to count them. And really, there is nothing marvelous, you know, Centipede, about having a lot of legs. Poor Earthworm, he's blind and know. He can't see how splendid I look. In my opinion, the really marvelous thing is to be able to have no legs at all and to be able to walk just the same. You call that walking? You're a slitherer. That's all you are. You just slither along. I love. You are a slimy beast. <laughs> I am not a slimy beast. I am a useful and much loved creature, as any gardener you like. And as for you, I'm a pest. He's so proud of that. Though for the life of me, I cannot understand why. Oh, please excuse me. My name is Ladybird. Please to me. I'm the only pest in this room. Unless you count the old green grasshopper over there, but he is too old to be a pest anymore. <laughs> Young fellow, I'm a grasshopper who's rather old, but not a pest. I'm a musician. Well said, old green grasshopper. In case you haven't guessed by now, my name's Spider. James, your name is James, isn't it? Yes. Well, James, have you ever in your life seen such a marvelous, colossal centipede as me? I certainly haven't. How on earth did you get to be like that? Very peculiar, very, very peculiar indeed. I was messing about in the garden under the old peach tree when suddenly a funny little green thing came wriggling past my nose. Oh, I know what that was. It happened to me, too. And me, suddenly there were little green things everywhere. The show was full of them. I actually swallowed one. So did I. I saw a three, but who's telling the story anyway? Not now, Centipede. There isn't time for stories. We have business to attend to. Why don't you get to the top and get started? What's going on? In case you don't know it, we are about to depart from the top of this gas here that we've been in for so long. We're about to roll away. It's like this great big beautiful peach to a land of, 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 to a land of... Of what? Never you mind. Nothing could be worse than this desolate hilltop and those repulsive aunts of yours. Here, 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 here. You may not have noticed it, but the whole garden, even before it reaches the steep edge of the hill, happens to be on a steep slope. And therefore, the only thing that's been stopping the peach from rolling away is the thick stem attaching it to the tree. Break this stem and off we go. I've done it. We're off. The journey begins. And who knows where we will end up. But if you have anything to do with it, it can only be trouble. <laughs> Nonsense. We're about to visit the most 
wonderful place and see the most marvelous thing. Isn't that so, Centipede? There's no, 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 we shall see. We may see a creature with 49 heads. Pets who lives in the desolate snow. And wherever he catches a cold, which he dreads, he has 49 noses to blow. <laughs> we may see a dragon and everyone knows we might see a unicorn there. We may see a terrible monster with toes growing out of the tufts of its hair. We may also see the sweet little bitty bite head, so playful, so kind and well bred. And such beautiful eggs, you just boil them and then... They explode and blow off your head! Ha ha ha! But who cares? Let us go from this horrible hill. Let us roll, let us bowl, let us plunge. Let us go bowling and rolling and spinning until we're away from old Spiker and Spud. Hooray! Why do we have to go so early, Spiker? It's so dark outside. Well, if an early bird catches the worm, then too early ought to catch the suckers. Ha 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 I don't get it, Spiker. What do you mean? Money. We're out here to make money, Spud. Get it? Make money. M-O-N-E-Y. We shall make a fortune today. Just look at all those people coming up the hill. I want to know what became of that little horrid boy of ours last night. He never came back, did he? He probably fell down the dark and broke his foot. Or maybe his whole leg. <laughs> Just wait until I get my hands on him. He'll never want to stay out all night again by the time I... Good gracious me, what is that awful noise? Spiker, I know this sounds silly, but it looks like the fence is breaking and the peaches, the peaches! Are you ill sponge? Are you, are you? You must be. Pardon me, but does it seem that, that we're bobbing up and down? 
bobbing up and down. What on earth do you mean? You are still dizzy from the journey. Now is everybody ready to go, to go upstairs and look around? Yes, 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 come on, let's go. I refuse to show myself out of doors in my bare feet. I have to get my boots on again first. <laughs> For heaven's sake, Centipede, let's not go through all that nonsense again. Let's go, let a centipede a hand and get it over with. Come on. While you're doing that, I'll leave a liar to help us get out. But this is impossible. I told you we were bobbing up and down. We're in the middle of the sea. But, but where are the wheels? Where are the woods? Where is England? Ladies and gentlemen, I think we found ourselves a rather slippery situation. Slippery? We're finished! I might be blind, you know, but that much I can see quite clearly. Off with my boots. I cannot swim with my boots on. <laughs> I cannot swim at all! Nor can I! Nor I! Well, you won't have to swim. We are floating beautifully. And sooner or later, a ship is bound to come along and pick us up. Are you sure we're not sinking? Of course, I'm sure. Go look for yourselves. The boy is quite right. We are floating beautifully. And now we must sit down and keep perfectly calm. It will be all right at the end. You know, he hates to be happy. He loves to make everything into a disaster. If this peach is not going to sink, and we are not going to drown, then every single one of us is going to starve to death instead. My God, he's right. For once, he is right. Of course, I am always right. We shall get thinner and thinner and thirstier and thirstier. I'm dying already. I'm shriveling up for one to food. Personally, I would rather drown. But you must be blind. How cruel! You know very well I'm blind. There's no need to rub it in. <laughs> I didn't mean that. I'm sorry, but can't you see that? See? How can I see if I'm blind? Can't you realize that we have enough food to last us here for weeks and weeks? Where? 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 Why, the peach, of course. Our whole ship is made out of food. John, John Green, Green G. Holsapak. We never God. thought of that. <laughs> my, my dear James, you are. S I, I don't know what we've done without you. You are so clever. You're crazy. We can't eat the ship. It's the only thing that's keeping us up. We shall starve if we don't. And we shall drown if we do. Oh dear, oh dear. Now we're worse than before. You can eat all you want. It will take weeks and. It will take us weeks and weeks to make any sort of in this enormous speech. Surely you can see that. For good in heavens, you right again. <laughs> what are you looking at so worried about, or what's the problem? The problem is, the problem is, the problem is, well, the problem is there is no problem. Cheer up, we're going to come and eat. Delicious. Just fabulous. You know, James, this peach is much better than those little green flies that live in those rose bushes. And flies are never as good as this. What a flavor. It's terrific. There's nothing like it. There has never been. And, and we, we shall know, know because we have heard me taste it all.
towards us. Go away, go away, you filthy beast. Look at the size of their jaws. Oh dear, they're attacking. We are finished now. They will eat up the whole peak, and then there will be nothing left for us to stand on. Then they'll start on us. She's right, we're lost forever. Oh, I don't want to be eaten. But they will take me first of all, because I'm so juicy and fat and I have no bones. <laughs> Is there nothing we can do? Surely you can think of a way out of this. Think, James, think. Come think. on, come on, there must be something we can do. There's something I believe we might try. Not seeing you awake. Tell us, tell us quickly. We'll do anything you say, but hurry, hurry, hurry. Be quiet. Let the boy speak. Go on, James. What are you going to do? I'm sorry, I forgot. We need string. We need hundreds of yards of string to make this work. But my dear boy, that's exactly what we do have. We've got all you want. How? Where? The silver. Did you ever notice the silver? He's still downstairs. Yes, he never moves. He just lays there sleeping all day long. But we can easily wake him up and make him spin. And what about me, may I ask? I can spin just as well as any silkworm. What's more, I can spin patterns. Can you make enough between us? As much as you want. And quickly? Of course, of course. And would it be strong? The strongest there is. But why? What are you going to do? I'm going to lift the bridge clear out of the water. You're mad! It's our only chance! Go on, James. How, how are you going to do it? Sky hooks, I suppose. Seagulls! The place is full of them. Look up there! I'm going to take a long silk string and I'm going to top loop one end of the seagull's neck and then loop another end and tie it around the stem of the peach. And another, and another. Ridiculous! Poppycock! Absurd! Folderdash! Madness! <laughs> How could a few seagulls lift an enormous thing like this up into the air and all that as well? There's no shortage of seagulls. Look for yourself. We'll probably need 400, 500, maybe a thousand, I don't know. But I shall simply go on to hooking them up to the stem of the peach until we have enough lifting power. It's like a balloon. You, hit, you give someone a balloon, well, enough, and then up they go. And the seagull has four more lifting power than the balloon, only if we had the time to do it. The boy's daughty. Let the boy speak. Go on, James. How are you going to do it? What's bait? Bait? What sort of bait? Wins! Seagulls love wins! Didn't you know that? And lucky for us, we have the biggest, fattest, juiciest wins! You can stop right there! <laughs> circling around, but they can't come down to get him themselves while well, we're all standing here, so this is what. Stop, 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 stop! I won't do it! I refuse! I, 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 I... My dear earthworm, you are going to be eaten anyway. What difference does it make whether it's sharks or seagulls? I won't do it! Why don't we hear what the plan is first? I don't give a hoot what the plan is. I'm not going to be pecked to death by a bunch of seagulls. You will be a martyr. I shall respect you for the rest of my life. Well, listen, she will not have to give, his li give her life. Now, listen, this is what we'll do. Yes, yes, yes. 
second seagull. I think that this one will do it. Oh, I don't like this at all. Hurry, James. Be quiet, Earthworm. You should be thankful that you're still alive. All because James had such a clever idea. Yes, I marvel at him. Just to capture the seagulls by using bait. It is a splendid idea. Not if you're the bait. It's working. I can feel a slip thing. Come on up. Look, everyone. It's working. It's working. Why don't we all go down below 
hold Jack and keep warm until tomorrow morning. No, I think they'll be very unwise. It'll be safer if we stay up here and keep watch. Then if anything happens, we shall be ready for it. Well, I see that James Henry Trotter and his companion are now crouched close together to keep warm. Little do they know what still lies ahead. Oh dear, it scares even me. Well, at this time of the night, there's not a sound anywhere. Listen how quiet it is. The giant peach is swaying gently from side to side. Strangely quietly. Not at all like airplanes that bore through the sky and scare whatever might be lurking up there in the atmosphere. Yes, that is why people who travel on airplanes never see anything. But the peach, ah yes, the peach makes no noise as it swings gently from side to side in the moonlight. Wait, wait, shh, be quiet. There, over there, do you see them? I think our travels are about to any second. Let's get back to the action as the story unfolds right before our very eyes. <laughs> glimpses of cloudmen working their magic upon the road below. They see fro they see a snow machine in operation with the cloudmen turning the handle and a blizzard of snowflakes blowing out the great funnel above. They see huge drums used for making thunder. They pass frost factory 
factories and wind producers, and something they imagine must have been a cloud man city. Just before dawn, they hear a soft whooshing noise, and they glance up to see a gray, immense bat-like creature swooping towards them out of the dark. It circles round and round the peach, flapping its great wings slowly in the moonlight and staring at the travelers. Then it utters a series of long, high cries and flies off into the night. How terrifying! Our travelers all sit motionless, fearful. They sit in silence, waiting for the sun to come up and over the rim of the horizon for a new day. <laughs> for us one at a time. My goodness! I forgot to polish my boots! Everyone must help me polish my boots before we arrive! <laughs> oh, centipede, let's not go through all that again. <laughs> What's that? It looks like a plane. It came zooming out of that cloud over there. Oh no, it's unbelievable! It, it, it flies right through every single one of the silken strings as it went by! I know it's hard to believe. 
But I think you landed on the needle of the Empire State Building. <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> How are we going to get down? Don't worry, they'll get us down. James, why are all those people hanging out of those windows cheering us? And the people waving madly. Maybe they think we're heroes. You know, I think you may be right. They must think we're heroes. <laughs> Yeah. 